Over the years, conservation has tried to become more transparent about what it does and what it means to conserve something. In the old days, an artist used to just work in a back room doing restoration. They would just come out of this room months later and you really wouldn't know what the person did. During the conservation process, the conservation team at the DIA made several important discoveries. And when they discovered the, the foot in the lower corner, a couple of different pedimenti in the fingers, they knew that this definitely was a Murillo, that he'd been working straight on this canvas and changing it as he went, which is a really important revelation for the DIA and for us as the owners of the painting. What happens with oil paint over time is that it becomes more transparent. So lower layers, tend to become more visible. That's why we're able to see that early rendition of where, where the artist positioned the foot. Ultraviolet shows us a lot of the surface of fluorescence. It helps us understand where the repaints are. We also did infrared because that penetrates a little bit further than the ultraviolet and helps us understand some of the artist changes that were going on. Definitely in the two areas of pentimenti in the, in the toes and in the finger here. On the Murillo painting, what we did initially was uh, non-destructive analysis. The primary piece of instrumentation in the conservation science lab is the X-ray fluorescence spectrometer. It is that instrument that we use as the first line of analysis and it gives us non-destructive information about the materials in a work of art. What happens is that the x-rays hit the material. It excites the electron environment of the elements within the material, and they differ in energy from what hit them. So that's what gives me the series of peaks that I have to interpret. At the time of Murillo, artists used a lot of mineral-based pigments and artists being the sort of experimental creatures that they are, experimented with them, tried them out. When I see cobalt, nickel, and arsenic in a spectrum, that screams a certain pigment to me. It screams smalt. Smalt is a ground glass used as a pigment. And we suspected this from the beginning because Spanish artists did use smalt and that is one of the pigments that is causing the problems in the sky. Over time, it transitions from a fine blue color to a grayish blue to almost colorless. The sky just doesn't seem quite right. It's, it's not as blue as it once was. I don't think we'll ever know what the artist intended with the sky. We have numerous uh, images of other Murillos that we're looking at. We learn things about a painting via non-destructive analysis that uh, raise some questions and uh, would benefit from further investigation. We can take a tiny, tiny sample from the edge of the painting, mount it, take the photographs through the microscope that would give a much closer look at the painted surface of the, of the Murillo. This is what this cross-section looks like underneath the microscope. So this is a photo micrograph. And what we see, uh, we did indeed capture all of the layers that Murillo applied to the canvas. And we have the ground layer. There's an intermediate layer here that is sort of a pale pink. And then there's a white layer on top of it. It just gives us a better understanding of the painting uh, as a whole putting it in its place in 17th century Spain. I think the students gained a better understanding of, of how involved, particularly on a painting like this, a treatment can be when major decisions have to be made at various points through the process. 
it's such a collaborative process too and I don't think I understood that until seeing the con conservation scientists and then the conservationists and the curator all needing each other to mm -hmm. work simultaneously it's it's so much more extensive than it than it seems I was um, back behind the scenes here earlier this summer and it was fascinating to go through it the first time and get that initial tour but to be back and to really see what they do was really fascinating.